and welcome to Musicals with Cheese, um, a musical podcast where a layman in the musical theater world and someone who knows it quite well talk about a musical once a week or month, depending on the musical. I'm joined, as always, by Andrew. Say hello, Andrew. Hey. Or That's as, me. As others could say, close on Andrew. He doesn't know much about Rent, but I don't think he liked it much. I'm a star! There's the typical Broadway musical, and then there's Rent. This is Rent, the musical for people who don't like musicals. Whether you've got 35 bucks or 80 bucks, or even just 20 bucks, you can see Rent. There's nothing typical about it. Rent at the Niederlander Theater. Call Ticketmaster today. I am so angry at you people. I was really, I was banking on you guys picking Hedwig last week. Andrew can tell you, that was what I was like, oh, they're going to pick Hedwig, it's going to be great. But, unfortunately, this was suggested by Purple Biscuit, Melissa Goldman, Milton Melendez, uh, Maria Ven Veenstra, Critic Corner, Hannah Cook, and Ela Jones. I hate all of you. <laughs> you you're all terrible. Please stop watching the show. We, we don't need people like you in the audience here, okay? Yeah. All right, so let's give some background about Rent. Rent is a rock opera um, written by Jonathan Larson throughout the early 90s. It was based on Puccini's La Boheme and premiered off-Broadway in January of 1996. What I think makes it most famous is that Jar Jonathan Larson died of an aneurysm the evening before the show's premiere performance off-Broadway. The show moved to Broadway posthumously. It won the Best Musical Tony posthumously. It won the fucking Pulitzer Prize for Drama. And in 2005, it was turned into a film. It grew popular and ran for 10 years. It's the 11th longest running musical in Broadway history. 11th. Oh my god. Oh my. Great Comet ran less time than Rent did. Yep. Despite overall positive reviews from, like, people at the time um it has since gotten a lot of criticism for its portrayal of homosexual characters particularly the character of marine and most of all it's just kind of it's not aged well <laughs> now that we got all that out the way i guess it's time to dive into the actual plot synopsis of rent <laughs> all right so we start on mark and roger they are roommates living in new york and they're 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 living in a loft. Um, they're not paying their rent because the place is owned by their former roommate. And they, his former roommate turned off the power. What? And expects them to actually pay for their house. Oh, God forbid. Yeah, they get angry about this, then sing this huge rock number entitled Rent. But then their friend Collins, a gay anarchist, Ivy League tutor... Um, he shows up and he's like, "Hey, I'm showing up," and then he gets he gets beaten up because New York. Gay anarchist Ivy League tutor. That, that's exactly how Wikipedia <laughs> describes. It just him. sounds so absurd when you say it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a gay anarchist Ivy League tu tutor. Okay. He is saved by Angel who is the one, like, perfect personification character because in the 90s, if you had a gay character, they could do no wrong because the gay community has been through a lot and you got to portray them positively. No oh boy, are they portrayed positively in this. Yeah. Um, they kind of hit it off right at once. Either way, so Mark <laughs> leaves for some reason because his girlfriend calls him or something. And while Ro no Roger's alone, he sings a song about how his girlfriend killed herself. Or Mark just brings it up very nonchalantly to the audience. His girlfriend April left a note saying we've got AIDS before slitting her wrists in the bathroom. <laughs> so then Mimi comes and does the, the song that they stole from the <laughs> Love OM with the candle. And, uh... and it's... Alright, let me say something nice about Rent real quick. Um, Light My Candle is a good song. It both is a song and tells the story. Um, I appreciate this in Hamilton with the song Say No to This, where it's a full story segment. You get, like, a full arc within the story, and it's still a song where it has, like, a chorus, verse, whatever. I appreciate this one song. There we go. I said something positive. It's just so on the nose, though. It is. Like, it's very cut and dry, but 
I appreciate it as a song as opposed to as a storytelling piece. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can agree with that. In that song, that Light My Candle, we find out that Mimi is addicted to drugs and is really wanting to fuck Roger. That's going to come up later. But she leaves, and then Mark and Collins and Angel show up, and they're like, Angel sings a song about how she murdered a dog. Yeah. So, yeah, she murdered the dog in the most strange way. Like, jumped off a balcony or something? I don't even know how she... I know she killed the dog. I don't know the exact method. Later. Um, either way, she sings the song Today For You, Tomorrow For Me, which I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it's like she's going to give stuff to them today, and then tomorrow they're going to help her. But do they ever do that? Like, it's an introduction song, and it's fun, I guess, but it doesn't really set up much aside from her killing a dog. <laughs> Well, sh uh, they are, are nice to her later, I guess. They're all friends now. Okay. They accept her right away because they're her, their buddy's boyfriend, girlfriend. And then their landlord shows up, who is also their former roommate. And you can tell he's an asshole because he tells a homeless man not to sit on his car. <laughs> yeah, who would do that? And he's like, C can I please get paid? And they're like, um, no. And he's like, what if you stop your ex-girlfriend's protest of me making people pay? I, I just love that this is the actual plot. <laughs> There's a protest. Other people are using this guy's land illegally. And they're protesting to allow them to do it. And he wants, he wants to, like, build a cyber studio so they can do their arts and get paid for doing it. <clears throat> Either way, then we cut to Mark, and he runs into... Oh, we didn't even mention this! Mark's girlfriend, Maureen, dumped him to be a lesbian. Or be with a woman named Joanne, who's a lawyer. That's the same thing as being a lesbian, isn't it? Uh, I think she's bi. I was. I want to be very careful with my phrasings. Uh, Mark and Joanne kind of hit it off, and they're buddies, and they bond over the fact that they both kind of hate Maureen. <laughs> I don't understand the whole the song like why is it a tango for one because it takes two to tango and she's cheating so there's more than two it, that like that doesn't make any sense speaking of which then mark goes to a life support meeting for people with aids then we cut straight to that to mimi stripping and then she comes in invades and tries to seduce roger with the death vagina She's got AIDS. He doesn't know this, and she doesn't tell him this. I feel like there's, like, a disclosure thing here. Like, if but they she's... Have, to have sex, that's something you should, like, let him know. But she's totally not a bad person, though. No, no, she's she's an angel. No pun intended. And then no, Roger Angel's kicks her up because he's got AIDS. He doesn't want to mess with drugs, and he doesn't, he doesn't want none of that in his life. He kicks her out. Here's my favorite song that shows up. It's called Will I? It's around. It's really simple. It's like, will I lose my dignity? Will someone care? Will I wake tomorrow from this nightmare? That's all the lyrics. It's simple, gets to the point, and it's emotional. It's a good song. Um, and it reflects Roger's feelings, and he doesn't want to die of AIDS, and so he decides after two years of withdrawal and not leaving the house, he's going to go leave the house and chase after me and me. Um, while that's happening, Collins, Mark, and Angel um, meet a homeless woman, and they, she, she yells at them. <laughs> I, everything's boring now. I'm losing it. And then Colin sings a song about escaping to Santa Fe, which is it's okay. And then Mark then, le yeah, leaves then... for some reason, and Collins and Angel have their love song. It's cute, and it's not terrible. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then they all get ready for Marine's protest. <laughs> Um, Mark, okay. Roger apologized to Mimi for kicking her out even though she invaded his room and house for no reason. Now, Maureen hasn't even been in the play at all at she's this point, She's literally right? the climax of Act 1, guys. Yeah, she's not even in it and yet. Either way, um, then we There's end... been an entire song about her and she's not even in the play yet. Yeah. And then, when we do finally get her... <laughs> It's the most horrible fucking <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> Over the moon. <laughs> Move <laughs> with me. Move <laughs> with me. She sings Over the Moon, which is like the most horrible thing ever. 
and it's sure it's a little tongue in cheek, but still, it's five minutes long. Yeah, it just seems to not end. Yeah, um, people criticize Les Mis for being long. Not a single song in Les Mis passes the four minute mark. This is five minutes long. <laughs> um, this whole fucking thing just. It's it, this song is like a microcosm of the whole entire musical. It's too fucking long. It's it's just bad. <laughs> Wait, you said just bad and too fucking long. Let's talk about La Vie Bohème, which is next. Oh no, this, what is this, like 10 minutes long? <laughs> yes, it's 10 minutes long, and it's not even a song, it's a list. Uh... <laughs> list of things that are happening. No, but they said the name of the thing it's based on in the song. Kind of. Mimi and Roger um, find out each other has AIDS, and then they sing a song about how they should be in love now. Joanne and Maureen break up, and then the the show, the act one ends. <laughs> and what have we accomplished? Like the entire act one is just introducing characters, basically. Introducing characters, a dog died. Yeah. And somebody, the two people broke up that were already thinking about breaking up, basically. Act two, we start with them all in a line singing Seasons of Love, the song that everyone sings and knows from it because it's like at every American Idol audition and like every gospel choir sings this song. I hate the song, Andrew. It's about, we start with them on New Year's Eve trying to break into their old apartment to squat. Illegal activity. They're justified though because they don't have money. The, whose fault is that? Either way, um, they get in and they and Mark gets a voicemail about like, "Hey, do you wanna do you wanna work with me? Uh, we're a news company and we like the footage that you got of the riot." Oh yeah, did we mention there was a riot after <laughs> after the protest? Yeah, and he filmed that. He and filmed then... a riot after the protest, and then that got him some coverage. And he's like, "I don't want to make money from my art because <laughs> it's selling then out." Then get a fucking job. And right after that, Benny comes on in and says, Hey, you can live here for free for a photo opportunity. And mentions that he used to date Mimi. That's the whole thing, isn't it? Roger gets angry for some reason. Uh, yeah. That didn't even make really make sense. It's like, okay, he used to, but he doesn't anymore. Apparently Joanne and Maureen got back together, but now they're breaking up again. <laughs> yeah, there's like a lot of things in this that are like off- off stage, I guess, where like you don't see them happen, they just kind of happen, and then we're told that they happened. They sing a song and that I, I don't, don't hate, though. <laughs> Roger's like, you've been seeing Benny, haven't you? And she's like, uh, she doesn't answer, and then he, he leaves her. And they sing a song about how it sucks that they broke up. And then they there's a song about that reenacts the sex lives of everyone in the show. Why? Why is this here? Andrew, do you know why? No. Why? Dude, you're asking the wrong guy, Why man. is there a sex orgy in the middle of this musical? Because it doesn't have a plot? Then in the middle of the sex orgy, Angel dies. AIDS. AIDS killed Angel and she dies and then there- That's why you don't invite AIDS to a, a orgy. <laughs> <laughs> AIDS, where was my invitation? AIDS wants to have sex. Well, they they invited AIDS like three times to this orgy. And like five different people. And everyone starts fighting at the funeral. That's not what Angel would have wanted. <sighs> Can we keep going? <laughs> <laughs> and then Benny, their landlord, pays for the funeral. And then Collins tells him that Angel killed his dog. <laughs> yeah, that's a good time to bring it up. <laughs> All right, and then Roger goes to Santa Fe and then immediately comes back and moves back in with Mark. And then Collins comes back and says, hey, I broke into an ATM, and if you type in this code, you can have unlimited money. These are our main characters that we're supposed to respect. And then they're all, like, drinking booze and, like, hanging out. And, oh, no, the lesbians found Mimi. And she she's dying of AIDS. Oh, my God. And then, then, okay, I'll, I can go over this part. I remember this. <laughs> she she dies, but uh, Roger sings a, the, 
a beautiful song he wrote for her and she comes back and says Angel was waving and said you gotta go listen to that boy oh yeah and then Mark plays his movie which is basically a Windows movie maker project of him and his stupid friends he's an artist and then the show finally fucking ends so what did you think of Rent it was long it was really hard to follow the music, a lot of it was passable, some of it was good, but the lyrics dragged all of it down. <laughs> There's too many characters. Um, I bet, uh, Andrew, um, Andrew, here's a really difficult question. Okay. Who is your favorite character? Holy fuck. <laughs> um, the, the, guy, the guy who wanted this rent, I guess. <laughs> okay, I can give a least favorite character, uh, definitely Mark. <laughs> He's just the worst. How so? He's so, like, preachy about everything. And he does this fucking... Mm, he gives the stage directions or whatever whenever he says something. Not, not the, the camera directions. Because he's a filmmaker. Because like, he's a filmmaker. I'm a filmmaker. He shoots without a script, Andrew. Any other, like, grand opinions you have about Rent? I think Rent is, Everyone knows what I think is about Rent. I think Rent is terrible. It's got some good music, and the music is good. It's incomplete work. Jonathan Larson died before he could, like, get it right. And I think he could have done some great work in the future after Rent if he had lived on, but right as Rent is, I think it's really bad. There's no... Like, I want to talk about the plot a bit. Huh. A little bit. I know we just went through the plot, but I mean, like, how the plot is structured. It's awful. It's, it's... There is no structure, really, the more I think about it. I know it. a lot of people, a lot of people watching this are probably like, like, oh, you're an idiot and you just didn't, like, you just didn't pay attention or something. But if, on your first viewing of this, I, it is really, really hard to follow. Like, it's just, it's, there's so many characters and it just goes all over the place to different characters with different things happening and there's things that happen off screen and then there's things that happen that are metaphorical and and it's just and and I didn't know what the fuck was going on like halfway through it and the fact that there's no set and there's not much lighting change it's just kind of like there's no there's no guiding you there's no help <laughs> yeah and it just keeps it just keeps going and going and going and there's like I, I got some characters confused occasionally because some of the <laughs> like they don't say names so like I didn't know that the guy's name was Mark and Roger until <laughs> just had to tell me halfway through <laughs> I was watching it <laughs> and then then at the ending it just it feels like nothing happened everyone's right where they were at the start of except it except one person died <laughs> only the only difference between the beginning of it and the end of it is someone died and we barely knew that person. Like, in the grand scheme of things, this all takes place in a, over a year. The first act is literally one day. We've known Angel for six months before she died. I just experienced nothing, and I don't know what it was. <laughs> all, you know? all whip and nay nay, signifying nothing. But this is the one of the most popular Broadway shows ever. It, like, was the first Broadway musical to premiere in Cuba. It ran for over 10 years it's the 11th running broadway show in history there has to be something there right there's something that we're missing isn't it i i don't know that's the thing that bothers me most about rent i don't get what i'm missing but at, at the same time it's also juvenile though like it's not handled in a in a like a way that is um nuanced it's just these people are perfect now, Andrew, you also watched La Boheme. How would you describe La Boheme in comparison to Rent? Um, may I first say La Boheme is significantly shorter. Well, number one, it's shorter. Two, the music is... I mean, it's very different, so it's hard to compare totally, but I, I personally think the, the opera is written better, just because mostly because of opera, but, you know. <laughs> well, there's a reason that it's a still remembered and it's really old. I think what it is 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 rent is lower brow. It just it seems like they took the story and they did it in a simpler way with they dumbed a down more the story simplified kind of, rather than like Yeah, they dumbed down the they dumbed down the whole story. But in dumbing down it they made it more complicated. 
<laughs> like, well, I can follow Lava down. Web much easier than I can follow Rent. They dumped it down in, 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 like, different ways. Like, they didn't dumb down the plot structure and all that. They dumbed down the morality. You know? I mean, I think it was too focused on being edgy and relevant that it didn't care about telling a story. In Lobo M, uh, I don't remember them singing about wanting to get out of their rent. I remember them just like, trying to fool their landlord, like at first, like. Yeah, yeah, but they never, they never actually felt entitled to not paying their rent. It was more like a "how are we gonna pay our rent" kind of thing, right? Which is like rent, what the song "Rent" should be about, like. Oh God, we're so behind on our rent. How are we gonna do this? As opposed to, and that's what. Oh God, why should we pay our rent? And another thing with that is, the the musical itself isn't about them trying to pay their rent. After that song, it's it's like gone from the story. It's just like the landlord comes and he's like, "Hey, you don't have to pay it." And it's like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> it's like, it's like, Okay. <laughs> the only way I can imagine someone liking this is if they're too young to understand how the world works. If you are between 10 and 15 and you like Rent, I get it. And it's like they're trying to portray these people as like, oh, they're just in hard times. But they're not really in hard times. The people in, in La Boheme are in hard times. The people in Rent just don't care. Shit, the peop like if we made Rent in 20 2008... It would almost work. Well, there's not even any references to, like, oh, I lost my job or something like right. that, you know? It, it's, it's just, they just don't have jobs, and they just don't want jobs. And that's it. And we're supposed to feel bad for them because of Imagine that. how much more powerful it would be if they were working on their art after working, like, 12 di hours a day. And then trying to stay awake working on it. Or, or, and then they get fired or something, and now they can't pay their rent, and it's like, oh shit, what do and we do? And they can't find jobs, and then when they get, when Mark gets a job at, like, Buzzline doing what he enjoys doing for a living, and it's like a godsend. Uh, yeah, attached yeah, sure, to go the DVD of the movie is a documentary that explains how Rent was written by Jonathan Larson and all that up to his death, and then strokes itself a bit about being an awesome show. Um, Jonathan Larson was a poor dude. Well, kind of. His family were upper middle class, and then he decided to live like a poor dude when he moved to New York. Um, he wrote a bunch of musicals. Um, only one that I liked, Tick, Tick, Boom. It is That is much better than Rent, in all honesty. Um, it's literally just about his life trying to be a composer, and it's much more compelling. And then it talks about how he wrote Rent, and then while creating Rent, was getting sick and died. I, I liked the, honestly liked the story of the documentary a lot more than I liked the story of Rent. I agree that I've watched the documentary many more times than I've watched like Rent itself. I mean, it's a tragic story, honestly, though, because I mean, he probably could have made really good works other than I'm like I'm not trying to shit on the guy who wrote oh, this. Oh no! But here's my question: Do you think Rent would have been as popular if he hadn't have died? No. <laughs> I think that it certainly helped it a lot. I mean, it's like, would Heath Ledger have won the Oscar if he hadn't have died? I feel like he could have uh, He could have had a real career, and he would have been really good. Uh, this might have been one of his worst works that he ever made, but he would But have. let's take a look. Um, Sondheim's first work is not the greatest thing ever. Um, imagine how much further nobody's he could have gone, work. is more what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, nobody's first work is the best thing. And, and this wasn't know? even, like, complete work. This was, like, he was still working on it, and, like, it was off-Broadway. So much changes from off-Broadway to on-Broadway. And it could have become something good within, like, a year. But he died in the middle of it, and people were too afraid to change things. <laughs> I'm gonna guess that if this had kept being worked on, they would have cut out a lot of the weird shit that just doesn't seem like it needs to be there mm -hmm. probably would have looked and more like the been... film probably yeah speaking of the film let's move on to talking about the film in 2005 rent was adapted into a film um directed by christopher columbus who also directed the first two harry potter films bicentennial man and the first two home alone films because you know that's who you want to give a musical to right it was rated PG-13, so they had to cut out most of the F-words and a lot of the grit that was really what most people 
So I was like, one of the niche things about the original musical is like, it's gritty and it's violent and it's like, it's full of swear words and it's adult. And it's filmed a lot on sets and it's like the Disney version of Rent. We're thinking that I was going to come in and turn it into the Disney version of Rent. That hasn't happened. It's easier to follow. It is easier to follow. They streamlined the plot and they brought in the original cast from the original 1994 production 11 years after they originally played it like and so they all look in their mid 40s and they're all still preaching these idealistic like man anarchy we shouldn't have to pay our rent while looking like they are businessmen at a fucking nine to five job it's um i mean you're adapting something to a, a movie that basically the original doesn't even have sets. The thing <laughs> like, is, the movie is more theatrical than the original show in a way. Well, yeah. It's so baffling to me. They made the movie more theatrical than the show was. It's still awful, though. Like, it's no better or worse than the original show. It's just strange. Like, they took what very little nuance was in the original musical and then took it away. Rent has many influences throughout the world, like it influenced pop culture, like, I mean, it's touched like the mainstream in a way, and I'm pretty sure it like changed musical theater forever. It was the Hamilton of the 90s in a way. But then again, we all know who, how Andrew feels about Hamilton, except you guys don't because that was cut out. I'm going to put a clip of it here. Um, I, I want to say I hate this. Rent, what is your overall opinion? It's juvenile, and it's very scatterbrained, like me. It's a lot like me, which is why I hate it. Rent is not the worst musical I've ever seen, but it is incomplete work. Um, And it's hard for me to give credit to incomplete work. So I'm afraid to say it's not very good, and I think with a little work it could have been something great. It's uh, been something, eh. I think it's got good, some good music to yeah, it. Yeah, like I will listen to a couple songs of... from the soundtrack. I got a couple songs from it, it on my iPod. <laughs> so Andrew, what is your cheese rating for Rent? Oh God, it's like, oh, moldy cheese. It's disgusting. It, it's it's like not moldy in a good way. It's moldy in like the whole thing is mold. There's a good type of moldy know. cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> it's not good cheese. You wouldn't want to eat it. <laughs> Rent is bad, people. I'm tired of you people trying to try to convince me. Like, no, it's good. It's good because I like it. And it. I'm young and I'm 15 and I'm doing it in my high school. Will you light my candle? Only thing to do is jump over the moon. Okay. Next week, I'm not letting you people pick nothing. We, I, I'm deciding next week. Ooh. <laughs> I gave you all power for one week, and then you, you abused it. Could have talked about Hedwig and how good it is, but no, we're here. All right. So next week, me and Andrew are talking about Sondheim's classic Assassins. Excellent. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, it'll come out a little faster than this one. Because Andrew won't need to watch Assassins 95 times to try to figure out what the hell is happening. (laughs) Yeah, and and I might actually look forward to watching it as well. Alright. Anything else you have left to say, Andrew? To everyone here that likes this... What the fuck, dude? (laughs) (laughs) I can't add much more to that. Thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry (laughs) if we offended you with our opinions of Rent. Um... I hope that you guys will come back next week. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe they will. I don't know. Probably, Probably not. not. Either way, um, <laughs> say goodbye, Andrew. Sayonara. Thank you guys for watching um, next week, Assassins. Look forward to it. Bye, guys. Uh-huh.